just have a really big face. Okay. All right. So lecture three two states and output equations. So now we get to do something with these vectors we're we'll talking about. So the state x input u and output y vectors interact through two equations, three one a and three one b. So the time derivative of the state vector is equal to some vector valued function of x, u, and t. So the state, the input, and time in general. Um, and the output is equal to some other function, uh, vector value function, of the same things, of the state, the input, and the time. So these are, these two equations are like the equations for the rest of the semester uh, and for uh, the system dynamics and controls class next semester. These equations are what it's all about. These are in general nonlinear, but we're going to linear. We're going to talk about the linear version in a minute. Uh, so f and g are vector valued functions that depend on the system. Let's not glide past these equations, which will be our dear friends for the rest of our analytic lives. And I, and I should say this too: yes, if you do, uh, if you do work in modeling, simulation, or controls after this too, so like when you go on, this is how it's done mostly, is with state-space modeling. Um, yeah. The first equation is called the state equation. So this guy. Whoa. For some reason, it always changes this to white. Um, so this one, state equation. Given state and input vectors at a moment in time, its function f describes how the state is changing. Okay, so at any moment in time, if you know what the what the state is and you know what the input is, you know how the state is going to change. Clearly, the state equation is a vector differential equation, which is equivalent to a system of first order differential equations. So there's only the highest time derivative is first order, right? But it's a system of first order differential equations, which can be solved. Uh, uh, and we, what we aren't going to actually do a um, direct solution of the state equation um, until next semester. Okay, so we're going to learn how to construct it. We'll learn how to transform it into an input-output ODE that we can solve analytically with our usual methods if we want. And we'll also learn um, how to put it into MATLAB and simulate it in MATLAB, uh, which is actually pretty easy. MATLAB is uh, a, a huge portion of MATLAB is built around the idea of having a state-space model and doing stuff with a state-space model. So once you have it in this form, you can drop it into MATLAB and it is off to the races. You can simulate whatever you want, which is pretty cool. So, so we'll learn how to do that too. Um, cool. In accordance with the definition of a state-determined system from Lecture 3.1, given an initial condition, uh, x at t naught, and input, the state x is determined for all time greater than or equal to t naught. The state space model is precisely the mathematical model described in the definition of a state determined system. So this is our mathematical model. Um, determining the state requires the solution, analytic or numerical, of the vector differential equation. So this is really like where, where it's all at, is, is this equation. Um, the second equation is uh, uh, a lot less um, maybe interesting. I guess the first equation has all the dynamics in it. Uh, the second equation is just trying to extract out interesting quantities from your model. So um, the second equation is algebraic. It's not a differential equation. You don't have to solve it uh, uh, for differential, uh, using differential equation techniques. 
It expresses how the output y can be constructed from the state x and input u. This means we must first solve the state equation, 31a, before we can know what the outputs are. So you solve this guy first for x, and then you can plug that into the second equation and you can get y. Um, just directly, algebraically. You don't have to, you don't have to solve anything else. It's, it's pretty much just done for you. Um, good. Since the output y is a vector of variables of interest, the output equation is constructed um, in two steps. One, define the output variables. So what are you interested in in the circuit? Maybe you're interested in uh, the voltage across a specific resistor. Maybe you're interested in the, the uh, force that's um, being applied by a damper in the system. Maybe, you know, whatever it is you're interested in, you have to write uh, 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 those down first. Like those are the variables you want to know. And then the second step is to write them in terms of state variables and input variables. So those, those are the two steps that you take. Once you've done that, then uh, you've essentially got 3.1b. And, and I'd, it's a very strange thing, but every year, most people, almost virtually everyone, gets 3.1a. They can do the state equation, which is the hard one, okay? Every exam comes along, people go through and they'll get the state equation. They spend all their time focusing on that, which is the important one to be able to get. The output equation is like practically free. Okay, it just comes along, it's like, it's the easy part. The end, so much confusion on the output equation, and, and I think, I, you know, I, I take some responsibility for that. I'm sure that I don't put enough emphasis on it. So this year, I'm gonna really try to make sure that we emphasize the output equation. It's pretty easy, and don't overlook it uh, in these problems. I sometimes just do the state equation, and I'm like, oh, and then you can do the output equation. Um, but I'm gonna try to really be careful to make sure it's, it's clear how to do that. Just because we know that for a state determined system, the solution to equation 31a, the state equation, can be determined, doesn't mean we know how to find it. In general, f is a map from uh, essentially the state uh, uh, rn, the uh, input, rr, and time to rn, to the state. And g is similar. Um, so in general, they can be nonlinear functions. So your states, like your voltage across a capacitor, maybe that's one of your state variables, it could be squared, or you could, uh, uh, you could have two state variables multiplying each other. Um, these would be nonlinear uh, states-based models. We don't know how to solve most nonlinear state equations analytically. An additional complication ari can arise when, in addition to states and inputs, system parameters are themselves time varying. Note the explicit time argument uh, of f and g. So time can sometimes explicitly show up in f and g on the right-hand side of these two equations. So these, these are complications uh, to the state space uh, uh, model. Um, Fortunately, a linear model is, is often sufficiently affected, um, is often sufficiently effective. A linear time invariant system has a state space model that you can write like this, okay? And this is where we're going to spend most of our time. Um, well, the spacing got weird there. Uh, it is doing state-space models that are linear and time invariant, meaning there's no explicit like plus 5t here, for instance. There's no time that shows up explicitly. All of the time changes show up through the states and the inputs. So none of the parameters change with time, like your, your uh, uh, resistance is assumed to be constant throughout the time. It's, in general, that, that it doesn't have to be the case. In some systems, you have to include that. Uh, but, but this uh, analysis is simplified greatly if you assume that it's time invariant um, and that it's linear. So since it's linear, we can do this nice thing with 
uh, uh, splitting out the state vector and the input vector separately, and then multiplying them by matrices. Okay, so there are going to be four matrices: A matrix, the B matrix, the C matrix, and the D matrix. So A. Oh, I see what the spacing is about. I'm filling in the blanks on this. That's what it was. Uh, so A is an N by N matrix that describes how the state X changes the state. Okay? So, um, Notice that A is multiplying the state vector, right? And its contribution to this is saying, this is how the state is going to affect the changes in the state, the time rate of change of the state. So um, this is a trivial system, but if the states don't affect the changes in the states at all, then A is just going to be a matrix of zeros, right? Um, if if it doesn't matter where your state is, if it's always going to change in the same way, uh, then A is just a bunch of zeros. Of course, most systems aren't like that. What, where, what your state looks like right now is going to affect how it responds. Um, so like if you're, uh, um, if you have a voltage across a capacitor as the example of one of the state variables, um, usually the voltage across the capacitor is going to affect how that voltage changes and other parameters in the system too, other variables often as well in the system. So um, that's the A matrix. Uh, B is an N by R matrix that describes how uh, the input changes the state. Right? So the state equation is all about changes in the state, right? And u is our input. So if we scale, if we multiply u by a matrix B, then B is going to describe how the input affects changes in the state, right? How it, how it changes the state. And hopefully our input, like a voltage source, is going to affect what the state of the system is, right? It's not a very effective input if it doesn't affect the state of the system. So most of our inputs are going to affect the state of the system. So we'll have a non-trivial B matrix. And then C is an M by N, M by N matrix that describes how the state contributes to the output. Right, so the C matrix shows up in the output equation. So it's not talking about how uh, it's not talking about changes in the output. It's just talking about the output directly, not not the time derivative of the output, just the output. So it multiplies the state. So it's the it's the link between states and the output. And then finally, D is uh, an M by R matrix that describes how the input contributes to the output. So in the uh, next couple lectures, we're going to learn how to derive the linear state space model, uh, that is how to find A, B, C, and D for a system from its linear graph. Okay, so we're going to use chapter two's construction of linear graph models, um, and we're going to come up with a linear state space model from that. Okay, so we're going to learn how to, and, and once you know A, B, C, and D, you know everything there is to know about a linear time invariant system. You know all the states uh, uh, for all of time, as long as you can solve it, um, which 
you can for a linear time invariant system there are um, relatively easy solutions for them uh, and you also know the output um, this is the link between linear graph uh, models and state space models so we've been yeah, so chapter one, we sort of introduced lumps parameter modeling, and then chapter two, we were like, okay, this is how to create a linear graph model for all types of systems, so mechanical and electronic, those types at least. And then uh, now in chapter three, we're going to learn how to connect that linear graph model up to a state space model. And specifically, these two equations, the linear versions of these two equations are the ones that we're going to mostly focus on the rest of the term. Uh, I do give you guys some nonlinear stuff more in uh, the system dynamics course next semester. Um, nonlinear stuff is really useful to learn how to, how to do. So you, if it's nonlinear, you have to go back up to these guys up here. Uh, but we're going to focus most of our attention on linear um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's easier to, to deal with analytically. Um, we can have direct solutions and, and whatnot. Uh, and it's effective for a lot of system analysis. You don't need a nonlinear uh, system model most of the time. So uh, it's not like this is never useful. This is useful most of the time. Sometimes you do need a nonlinear model, though. Um, like last year, I gave a project in system dynamics that required a nonlinear model. And people freaked out a little bit, but it was OK. It turned out it was pretty fun. So yeah. Any questions on the state and output equations? Cool. All right.